there is nothing like Miami if you want to taste the foods of Latin America. When all those cuisines mingle with our own, there are some surprising combinations. Like this one from Miami food blogger Patty Ruiz. We're going to make a Cuban dish, chicken vaca frita. And then we'll make a mango salsa with a little bit of avocado. And that way, we're going to make it as authentic as we can. This is so beautiful. Was it good? You be the this judge. so good. The mango, the avocado, the jalapeno. The, so the, good. The citrus, fantastic. And then we asked people to come up with a recipe using ingredients within 50 miles of where they lived. One person in Charlotte, North Carolina, came up with something completely original, Southwestern dessert tamales. Mm. Latin with a twist, today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Miami is a melting pot of so many Latin cultures, and so is its food. And nothing says Florida like seafood. Garcia's was started by 11 fishing brothers from Cuba. You can still find Mama and her sons manning the fish counter. Out back, I watched fishing boats pull up as I tucked into pricey but tasty stone crabs, the signature seafood of Miami. This is also the place to find the Cuban burger hybrid. The Frida, pure deliciousness on a bun. It's a spice chopped beef patty topped with mounds of crispy potato fries and a super secret sauce. There are hot debates over the best Frida joint. El Rey, Cuban guys, or Mago de la Fritas. What makes, makes my father and El Mago special is his consistency, his love. He's always here from morning to end. I don't know the recipe. It's only made by him. He's here every day. No surprise, food blogger Patty Ruiz of The Mad Table likes to mix South Florida flavors with classics like pavlobas with dolce de leche, lamb chops with chimmy verde sauce, Instapot Cuban black bean soup, or vaca frita, a Cuban home recipe of shredded beef that's crisp fried with onions. Delicious, but it takes hours to make. So Patty invited me to her Miami waterside home to learn a weeknight friendly version. So what are we making today? So we're gonna make a Cuban dish, chicken vaca frita. Okay. And we're gonna build my spin, my little twist. Instead of using beef, I'm gonna make it with chicken. Oh. And then we'll make a black bean sauce, a mango salsa with a little bit of avocado. And that way we're gonna make it as authentic as we can. Yum. So what's the first step here? So we're going to start off with the mojo. First, I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt. So and gonna... you're using an actual mortar and pestle. I am. Boy, that's good for the muscles, the arm muscles. <laughs> it is. Now I'm adding a half teaspoon of peppercorn and 10 cloves of fresh garlic. Oh, and lots of garlic. And lots of fresh garlic. No kissing tonight. And I'm going to mash it all with my mortar and pestle. So tell me, what is mojo? So mojo is a traditional Cuban marinade. You can use it as a dipping sauce. You can use it on sandwiches. You can use it for meat. And in this case, we're going to pour it over the shredded chicken. The shredded for our chicken. chicken vaca just, frita. Terrific. You think okay. it's ready? I think Looks so. Looks good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer everything into this bowl and add the rest of our ingredients and a teaspoon of dried oregano. Is that traditional? Yes. Mm -hmm. And three quarter cup of fresh lime juice. Don't even think about getting that bottled stuff. I mean, we're in Florida, you need the fresh stuff. To that, I'm adding a half a cup of fresh orange juice. I could see that would have many uses. Oh, you can put definitely. it on all sorts of things, yeah. And now we want to slowly stream in three tablespoons of olive oil. Is, is that what you would use in Cuba? Absolutely, yes. Okay. And know. now we've got a traditional Cuban mojo. Okay, we'll pour it on here. Yes. Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't that beautiful? This feels very healthy. 
Yes. And tons of flavor. And this was cooked chicken that we shredded. Yes, cooked so chicken. So you could use rotisserie chicken. You could, absolutely. Okay. And now we would like to set this aside, right? If you have time, absolutely. Okay. So we'll just set it aside while we, get, we make our uh, other ingredients. So what's next? So next we can start with our fresh mango salsa. And what would you like me to do? Can you cut up a small avocado, please? So this is the traditional Mexican Haas avocado. Yes. OK. Um, I am going to show you a safe way to cut up an avocado, OK? Because most people do it in the air and then go like that with the pit. You, you feel very macho, but if you miss, it's bad news. So I learned this from the California avocado folks. Down the avocado. And then you go around. So I've now got the cut that way. I turned it a quarter turn, and I'm going to do it again because this is the whole point, is getting that pit out is a little fraught. But when you do this, the pit just pops. Oops. Oh, wow. Yeah, there we go. I love that. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. You know, th these are the little things that make us so happy. Tell me what else goes into the salsa. OK, can... so we're going to start with three ripe, fresh mangoes diced. That looks yummy. I love mango. It may be my favorite fruit. And then I'm going to add a quarter cup of diced red onion. Love the color yes. of the red onion with the mango. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here I have a half chopped red bell pepper, and I'm going to put it in here. Do you know what I do with the red onion sometimes is I soak it in ice and water for 20 minutes, which takes out that bite and the bad breathiness that they bring to a dish. It's brilliant. Yeah. I like that. I've got some diced jalapeno, a half jalapeno seeded and minced. It looks like you took out the seeds in the ribs. Yes, absolutely. Is that because you thought that I was not a spicy girl? Or you just don't like the seeds in the ribs? Well, we're going to have some crushed red pepper as well. So it could be a little too much heat. You know, I'm at a stage where I just love a lot of heat. A half teaspoon of ground cumin. And this is going to be delicious. It's got so many of my favorite ingredients. Should I go ahead and just put the avocado in? Yes, I think so. OK, and I'm going to add extra red pepper since you like heat. OK. That is gorgeous it's right beautiful. there, yes. I'm so excited, I can't wait. I'm gonna add a quarter cup chopped fresh cilantro. Here we go, all of it. And if somebody hates cilantro? You can use parsley, mint, fresh mint. Mint would be, would be delicious in yes. there, yes, absolutely. Okay, and then, Sarah, can you please squeeze a half of a fresh orange and a half of a fresh lime? Oh, yummy. I love citrus, I have to say. It's, it's a game changer. It is. It just brightens things up. OK. Yeah, oranges. We're in Florida. Of course, we got to do something with oranges. Yeah, and I like the combination of the lime and the orange. Oh, yes. That's it. And a little olive oil. OK. Just a little I'm drizzle. learning. All right. Put this right And here. we did put some salt in there, too, I remember. Yeah. Oh, this is so beautiful. Isn't it? Ooh. Uh, does this benefit from sitting for a little while, or do you pretty much want to eat this right away? You I mean, I want to eat it right yeah. now, but... Either way, I mean, if you can wait a few minutes, you mm. can let it sit, just so the flavors Come melt. Come together, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we can go on to the onions. OK, so how do you want me to slice this? So if you can slice them into half moons. Half moons? Yes. So don't follow the ribs? No, please. OK, now why half moons? That's so interesting. I think it just goes better to have smaller pieces of onions. So this is chicken vaca frita? Chicken vaca frita. And is it normally done with chicken? Traditionally, it's done with beef. Huh. But it takes a little longer when you make it with beef. Right. And with chicken, you can easily make it a weeknight meal. We're using a already cooked chicken. Yes, So absolutely. rotisserie chicken or some chicken you've cooked before. Right. I see that. So it's just a lot faster. With the beef, what cut would you use? Um, you can use a chunk or a flank. Oh, how thick do you want them? Slice them thin. Thin. Yeah. OK. So about like that? Yes, that's perfect. And now we fry it up. So you want to cook your onions first. Mm. And I like using the same skillet that we use to cook not? the onions, because it's got all that flavor. I'm going to pour some oil in our hot pan. Also, this is it's one last pan to clean on a weeknight. Yes. transfer these onions into a bowl and use the same pan to cook the chicken. And then you'll have all that onion flavor, the onion oil on the chicken. Make it really yummy. Yes. 
they're ready now. You I see can how see that. They're nice really and crispy. nice. You're holding out for that as well. You yes. Should be. So I'm going to take them out. And then we're going to combine all the ingredients together. OK, so here's the chicken. Thank you. Did you put it in with the marinade and everything? I try to not use the, the marinade, because mm -hmm. then it'll be too wet. And, and it won't crisp. Got exactly. It. And it'll take about five to six minutes per side. Sarah, can you please chop some fresh cilantro? About a half a cup. OK. That looks pretty nice. You see how nice and crispy yeah. it is? Yeah. That's exactly what you want. OK, so now what? So now I'm going to transfer the chicken oh. into this bowl where we have our caramelized onions. And we're going to give it a stir, add some fresh lime juice and some cilantro, and. Oh, you want me to get some lime ready please. here? Please. Yes. You're going to put some salt in there, too? Yes. So we season it again. Do we want a whole lime or just a half just a lime? Just a half. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. And then you want me to just sprinkle the cilantro on Please, top? Please, yes. Woo! i got to hold on to it here. It's windy. OK, come back here. Flying cilantro. There we go. Oh, that looks so good. Today, instead of eating it with white rice, which is how you would normally eat it, we're going to char some tortillas on the grill, and we're going to have chicken vaca frita tacos. Yummy. So if you want, you can give it a stir. I'm going to go ahead and start the tortillas, and then we can start assembling our tacos for lunch. Sounds wonderful. I'll get the other parts. Oh boy, time to eat. So here we've got our tortillas. Oh, those look wonderful. So what we're gonna do is start with a layer of beans. Mm -hmm. I just wanna say that the recipe for the beans will be on the website. Yes. So don't despair, you'll have all the parts of this. Add a little bit of the chicken vaca frita with the caramelized onions. And do you want me to do the salsa? Yes, And then please. you can start setting up a second one. All right, thank you. Ooh, and we've got cer cerveza. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Looks so good. Oh boy. Ooh, look at this. And the cilantro and the yes. lime. I love all the citrus you put into every part of this. Would you like some fresh lime oh, juice? Oh, yes, of course. So here you go. Here. Thank you. And here's your napkin. Yay. Boy, if I lived here, I'd have every single meal down there and some cocktails. I mean, wow. Is there a particular way you should eat this? Oh, you can fold it like a taco or eat it like a tostada. Ah, I'm so excited. I know, however I eat it, I'm going to be it's, wearing it. Yeah, yeah, super messy. But yeah, you yeah. see how, what a quick mm. weeknight meal this is? Mm. Mm. Oh my god, this is so good. Mm. So much flavor. Who knew that chicken could be that exciting? <laughs> wow. The mango, the avocado, the jalapeno. The, so the, good. the citrus, fantastic. Well, I want to propose a toast to my buddy in Cuban cooking. Thank and you, thank Sarah. You so it was so much fun. And, and your lovely home and lovely. Thank you. Are we going to go swimming next? Yes, we should. Oh. Why not? <laughs> wow, so good. Mm. We love our viewers. As a matter of fact, we love them so much, we set up this challenge last year on Facebook. It was a locavore challenge, meaning we asked people to come up with a recipe using ingredients within 50 miles of where they lived. Well, we got so many entries, it was really hard to decide. And finally, we narrowed it down to five, and then from five to one. And that one person lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Her name is Susie Trivisano, and she came up with something completely original, very unusual, Southwestern dessert tamales. So I went down to her house, and we cooked all day, and we made these tamales, and their core ingredients were blackberries and peaches, and oh, were they so delicious. What a gorgeous house. Welcome. How nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you, too. Oh, nice to meet you. Boy, is that an incredible recipe you gave me. Thank you so much. With that fruit and a tamale, wow. Thanks, I'm looking forward to making it with you today. What are we gonna do for fruit? Let's get some peaches and blackberries. Are these North Carolina peaches? They are, in fact, they're Charlotte grown. Whoa, all right, it doesn't get let's more go. local board than that. Okay, let's, let's go get, get in it. my car. So Charlotte is so beautiful, but I'm fascinated. Why did a Charlotte girl come up with a recipe for tamales, for dessert tamales? That's a great question. I'm actually a native of northern New Mexico. I made tamales at Christmas with my neighbors and learned how to make dessert tamales, and I've been doing it ever since. Wow. It's just brilliant. All right, this is cute. Wow, this is a cute little stand. This is Go Go Fresco. It's a mobile pop-up farm market. Oh. And it goes to a different location every day and donates a portion of its proceeds to local charities. And today, they're donated to this Friendship Garden, which grows and donates produce to Charlotte's Homebound. And it's right in the middle of town. Right in the middle of town. That's amazing. It is. The city garden. Wow. Wow. Oh, so yeah. we need uh, lots of peaches. Can we even buy this whole thing? Yes. OK. <laughs> these are beautiful blackberries. And what? how many of these do you think we need? Probably about four. About four. Organic, local, you can't beat it. No. Yes, everything comes from farms in and around Charlotte. Awesome. Thanks there you go. so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great All right. kitchen. Any chef would just die for this. It wow. is a good kitchen. I enjoy working in it. Jeez, I see you've got a few things ready for us. That's terrific. Yeah, I do. You want to put on an yeah, apron let's and let's, let's get to work. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to start with the filling? Yes. While I cut up the peaches, Susie added a quarter cup sugar, a quarter cup brown sugar, a quarter of a teaspoon black pepper freshly ground, half a teaspoon cinnamon ground, a half a teaspoon anise seeds toasted, a half a cup of almonds toasted and roughly chopped. Oh, is that North, local salt? This is North Carolina salt from the Atlantic coast, and we're going to put a half teaspoon of that in. So you want three cups of peaches? I think that'll peaches. work. OK. You know, so let's make the tamale dough now. Great. Bring these flowers. Oh, yeah. You've got two different kinds of cornmeal. You're going to tell me about that in a minute. All right, let's get our bowl. Another bowl. OK, so let's start with the cornmeal. Now, you've got both white and? We have two cornmeals here, both milled in North Carolina, medium grind. One is a very white flour. Oh, yeah. It has a very sweet flavor. This is yellow, and it has a very intense corn taste. They're, they're both from North Carolina. Which one do you want to use? I think we're going to go with the yellow today. Okay. I'm going to add a half a cup of the cornmeal to the bowl, and if you would add three quarters cup of the masa, we're ready to go. Let me tell you a little bit about masa harina. What they do is they take field corn and they soak it in lime. Then they take that and they cook it, and they dry it, and they grind it. And so then we're ready to go with our masa harina. And how much do we want of that? Three quarters of a cup, I believe. We do, three okay. quarters of a cup. Okay. And you don't usually measure this either. I just, mean old me made you measure it, right? Well, I'm usually a little more careful with the masa because I want the right consistency. Oh, okay. But good at, that's my kind but of you, measuring. But you also know, I know really. <laughs> you also, I'm gonna get the water. We want, okay. what, a cup of water or so? Yes. Okay. Uh, but you also know what it looks like. I mean, this is yes. one of those things where it's not just the amounts, it's, it's also what should it look like. Right. Okay, I'll get a wooden spoon. A yeah, wooden spoon reminds me of my grandmother. When I tested that, I, I actually added a little more water myself. A little bit is fine. Mm -hmm. um, too much will make the, the batter very runny, and mm -hmm. then it will never coagulate. Mm -hmm. This is actually fine. 
That looks good. This looks real good. Can I just feel it? Sure. With my impeccably clean hands? You should be able to pinch it, and it should hold its shape. That's great. Okay. You just said take a little indent? Yep. So now we want to let it sit for an hour to let it um, come together, and um, then we'll be ready to make our tamales. I think this is just about right. Okay. It looks good. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and cream the butter? Okay, we've got a half a cup of butter here. Unsalted. Unsalted butter. There we go. Okay, it's nice and light and fluffy. You're using butter instead of lard. How come? I think that um, butter is much better tasting in a sweet dish than lard would be. Mm -hmm. And I think it's healthier, too. And how's it changed the texture? It um, doesn't really change the texture that much. Oh, OK. Cool. All right, what else goes into our dough here? Then 3 quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And now a half teaspoon of baking powder. I, I assume, of course, that's for leavening reasons. What that, made you think of that? It helps to leaven the dough and keep it from being too soggy. The flavor of the fruit gets drowned out by the masa. Really dense dough. Yes. Gotcha. OK. Smart. Oh, I see we add a little bit of salt, too. Right. A pinch of salt. Yeah, salt is important in desserts. Measure the milk. Gives it a little sort of pick-me-up. 3 eighths of a cup of milk. And then we add the dough. We do. Okay. I think it looks done, don't you? Oh, that's beautiful, yes. Okay, good. It's ready. So it's time to roll. I have an idea. Yes. It's a beautiful day. Why don't we roll the tamales outside? I like that. You should see my garden. It's a beautiful place. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I have turtles that sometimes... Uh, oh. Would you oh, look dear. at that? Well, I guess we're on to plan B. Okay, what a perfect spot. Isn't this great? All right, I'm ready to learn. You should have seen my pitiful tamales. <laughs> so you take corn husk, and you put two to three tablespoons of the masa dough in the middle, and you spread it out. You can use the corn husk to actually spread the dough out, and you want to leave a generous border all the way around. So this is sort of like playing with Play-Doh. It is. This would be a good thing to do with kids. It is. It's a great family activity. Once you've spread it out, you take two or three tablespoons of the fruit. We pull up both sides, and we use the dough, get the dough to completely encase the fruit. We roll it down. Boy, this is like origami. It is. You fold up the short end, fold it over, tie it off with one of the strips. Then you pinch the other end and tie it off with another strip. <laughs> all right, oh, so here we go. Great. Yes. We're all done. And with the leftover corn husks, I'm going to line the steamer. And so these are just the dried guys, the same ones as we used for this. Right, they're the, but they're soaked. You know what, I have a secret. I, um, I couldn't find the dried corn husks, or I didn't have time to get them, so I used fresh. Oops. I wanted to know how that came out. I thought it was fine, but then again, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, you know, I was just like, Did wow. it change the flavor at all? They might have been cornier. Cool. All right, then we can just lay these in here. Then we'll just cover it. I do more, even more on top, huh? Yeah, you really want to make sure it gets well steamed. Mm -hmm. I have a damp, clean dish towel. It's sort of like tucking them into bed. It is. Night, night, tamales. <laughs> See you later. So we just put it on here, close it, on. it up. And then, how long again? For an hour and a half. Okay. 
Oh my god. Yummy. Don't they look great? Okay, they smell good. I have to tell you, they're gonna show me how to eat one, because I sort of attack it. I don't know what to do with myself. Well, there is no one way to eat it. Okay. Tamales are traditionally served with a sauce. So I'm going to pour this blackberry coulis on top of your tamale. Ooh, and let's garnish it with a few of the blackberries that we got at the farmer's market today. So you just pureed the blackberries and added some sugar to the juice and, and uh, that was it? And maybe thickened it with a little cornstarch? And some lemon juice. And lemon juice, of course. You got me so excited. Mmm. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for teaching me the really right way to make these dessert tamales. You know, next time we're just going to have to go on a picnic. Let's do it.